If you are working part-time and your current full-time employer offers a 401k plan, keep in mind that the limits between your self-employed income and what your employer offers are aggregated, meaning that if you already have maxed out your 401k plan with your employer, then you can no longer put an additional 401k contribution into your self-employed plan, but you could, however, put a profit-sharing contribution into your self-employed plan. Are you ready for a successful retirement? We're addressing the topics facing today's retirees. Welcome to Retire with Ryan. Now here's your host, Ryan Morrissey. Welcome back. This week, we're going to talk about retirement plan options for self-employed individuals. And that could be either if you're completely self-employed or maybe you do some part-time work and that work is considered self-employment outside your typical employer. So you have really five options for these plans, which we're going to go through. But the first thing that you need to be thinking about anytime you're thinking about retirement is how much should you be saving? There's a number of different calculators out there. I'll share a link to one that I found on NerdWallet that can help you to do some rough calculations as to how much you should be saving. You can also use other rules of thumb. I've mentioned in previous podcasts how you should try to be saving at least 10% and the older you get, the higher that percent should go. Or obviously, you can engage the services that I provide or another financial planner provides to help get more detailed. But once you've figured out how much you want to save, then you can look at the different plan options available to you. So those five options are one being either using a traditional or a Roth IRA, using what's known as a individual 401k or a solo 401k, using a SEP IRA, using a simple IRA, or using a defined benefit plan. So we're going to go through those five options, talk about the pros and the cons and how you could implement that. So option one, using a traditional or Roth IRA, that's just about as easy as it's going to get for you when setting up one of those accounts. So the limits this year are $6,000 to contribute to either a traditional or a Roth. And that limit will stay the same next year. If you're over 50, then you can contribute a $1,000 catch-up above that amount. And the good news is that there's very little paperwork in setting one of these accounts up. If you don't have any retirement plan at all, then you qualify to make the traditional IRA contribution. That's fully deductible on your taxes. Or you can make the Roth contribution. Now, the Roth contribution is not a tax deduction. However, when the money goes into the account, it grows tax-free. And when you take it out, it's comes out tax-free as well. So that's the benefit with the Roth. And I'm not going to get into what you should be thinking about between a traditional or Roth. I'm going to save that for planning on next week's podcast to talk about that. But there are pros and cons to each depending on where you are in life and what could make sense. But if you're looking for deductions, then the traditional IRA is going to be the most beneficial in that sense because you're able to receive a deduction of potentially up to $7,000. And this could be opened anywhere that you want to have your account. It could be with an online broker, such as I use TD Ameritrade or a number of others. And it's a good way to get started. But as I mentioned, there is a limit of $7,000 if you're over 50 or 6000 if you're under. So if you're looking to contribute more than that, then you need to look towards one of the next options. So option two is the solo 401k is essentially a 401k just for one individual. It's also a 401k, but it's just covering you, the business owner. And the benefits of this plan are that there are higher contribution limits. So just like a traditional 401k, the contribution limits this year are $19,500. And that's for this year and also for next year. And if you're over 50, there's a catch up of $6,500. So $26,000. So you can put 100% of your compensation into that 401k. What that means is that if in this part-time work or self-employed work, you made $30,000, that was your net profit, which is essentially 
revenue minus expenses, then you could put that whole $26,000 contribution into the plan. You're also able to set this up where you can add a profit sharing component on top of that $26,000. So that could allow you to reach the maximum plan limit, which is $57,000 this year. That goes up to $58,000 next year. And then that's not including the $6,500 catch-up that we mentioned before. Obviously, that gives you a lot more that you can put into this plan versus the traditional IRA. Some of the other things to know about is that if you're a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, you're limited to contribute 25% of your net self-employed income. That number is your net profit, which is your revenue of your business minus your expenses, less half of your self-employment tax. And that number, you can contribute 25% to reach that limit of $57,000. If you have a spouse who works with you in the business, then they could also contribute up to that maximum of $57,000 plus the $6,500 catch-up for this year. So there's a, a number of calculators out there, which I'll put a link in the show notes. Two that I think are good ones to use. One is from AARP, and there's another one with Fidelity. And both of those allow you to put in your income and also your age, and then it can calculate for you how much you're able to put into these plans. There is a little bit more paperwork involved in setting up one of these plans than there would be just setting up an IRA or Roth IRA, but it's not anything that you can accomplish. But you do have to worry about when you add employees and they would have to be counted in the plan and that would change things and make things a little more complicated. It wouldn't mean that you'd need to abandon the plan, but you'd need to make sure that once you're an employee qualified based on how you set up the plan, that you're factoring them into the profit sharing contribution that you offer and whether or not you'd want to offer an employee match as well. Most online brokers, as I mentioned before, TD Ameritrade, others, you can set up this account there and there's very little, if any, cost to do it. One thing to keep in mind is that once the assets in the plan grow to $250,000, as a, if it's just yourself, then you're supposed to start filling out some paperwork with ERISA regarding the plan. Or once you add an employee into the plan, then you also have to fill out some paperwork. So that's where some more expense comes into play. You also have the option with these plans too, that you could set it up as a Roth 401k, or you could add a Roth 401k account. You won't get the same tax deduction as you would with the traditional 401k, as the money in the Roth goes in after you've paid tax on it. But you're going to get the same treatment as the Roth IRA. And if you're looking to get money put away that grows tax deferred and have it be tax free in retirement, then this can be a good option for you as well. If you are working part-time and your current full-time employer offers a 401k plan, keep in mind that the limits between your self-employed income and what your employer offers are aggregated, meaning that if you already have maxed out your 401k plan with your employer, then you can no longer put an additional 401k contribution into your self-employed plan, but you could, however, put a profit-sharing contribution into your self-employed plan. Or if you had already put $10,000 into your employer plan, then you could put an additional $9,500 to reach the contribution limit in your self-employed plan. And if you do need other help with this plan, you can always involve a financial planner or what's known as a third-party administrator. That's a company or an individual that just helps administering retirement plans, and they're familiar with the IRS rules and the filing rules to make sure that you're managing your plan properly. Option three is what's called a SEP IRA. And this is also best for self-employed people with few to no employees. And with a SEP plan, you're limited to contribute 25% of your net employment earnings or compensation up to a maximum of $57,000 in 2020 or $58,000 in 2021. Unlike the 401k where you can put 100% of your compensation you're still limited to that 25% net um, self-employed earnings. So that is a negative when compared to the 401k and the fact that if you wanted to put the max for the 401k into the plan of 19500 you would have to have 
that be equal to 25% of your net self-employed earnings, which might not be the case. So there isn't as much flexibility there. And then anytime you add an employee, whatever percentage you're putting in for yourself, you have to put in for your employee as well. So that's also a bit of a negative. Some of the positives are that SEP IRAs are easier to maintain than the SOLA 401k because you don't have to worry about the ERISA filings when the plan gets to over $250,000, or you also don't have to worry about when an employee's added to the plan, any additional filings or paperwork that you need to do as a result of that. Option four is what's known as a simple IRA. And this is for either self-employed individuals or companies that have less than 100 employees. And with this plan, there's a lower contribution limit. For 2020, the limit is $13,500. There's also a catch-up contribution if you're over 50 of an additional $3,000 per year. So your total contribution could be $16,500. But you also can put in an employer match. You're allowed to either put in a non-elective match meaning if the employee doesn't put in anything, you put in a certain amount and that's 2%, or you can put a 3% match in, meaning if the employee puts in 3%, then you would match their 3%. You also have the option to reduce the match two out of every five years, as long as you notify employees 60 days prior to when you do that. And you'd want to check more into the IRS regulations about that. You do have a deadline of establishing your simple plan by October 1 if your business has been in existence, but if it's a new business and it wasn't administratively feasible to set it up before October 1, then you could set it up after October 1. So the positives of this plan are that relatively easy paperwork to set up, you get a tax deduction, and if you do end up having employees, there's not a lot of administrative burden regarding filing paperwork with ERISA. And I didn't mention earlier, but ERISA governs all retirement plans. So you want to make sure that you're adhering to the rules set out by ERISA, because if you don't, that could end up causing you to pay fines or penalties on the plan. And option five is what's known as a defined benefit plan or a pension plan. So I talk about pension plans, and you've probably heard me say that a lot of companies have eliminated their pension plans, and that's definitely true. But as a self-employed individual or a small business, you have the option to still set up a pension plan. And the benefit of doing this is that if you're completely self-employed, you can put away a significant amount of money, possibly even more than the 401k and SEP limits. It's based on the type of plan that you set up. It's also based on your age. And these are pre-tax contributions that you could make. So it could allow you to really accelerate your retirement savings, especially if you're close to retiring and maybe you haven't set us a lot aside for retirement, and you're looking to max that out above and beyond what the 401k plan and profit sharing plan allows. As I mentioned before, however, if you do end up having employees, then you will have to include them in the plan. So this could end up costing you more money out of pocket, and it might not be as beneficial to you, the employer, to set one of these plans up. They do have higher administrative costs than the other options because of the calculations that have to be done on an ongoing basis regarding what you can contribute per year. And they have a number of different options. I mentioned earlier about working with either a financial advisor or a third-party administrator. If you're going to look at setting up a pension plan, you definitely want to involve one of those parties because it gets a little more complicated than the previous options that we mentioned. Most of these plans, as I said before, you can set them up with an online broker and the paperwork is relatively straightforward. Or if you need our help, we can help you with that as well. I hope you found this episode on retirement plan options for self-employed individuals beneficial. If you are enjoying these podcasts, please subscribe and leave a five-star review if you haven't done so already. And I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season. And I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Take care. You should consult a financial advisor familiar with your specific circumstances before you make any financial decisions. Nothing in this broadcast constitutes a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mention of rates of return are historical or hypothetical in nature and are not a guarantee of future returns. Ryan Morrissey, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Morrissey Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Music